Hello everyone and welcome to Extreme Graphics Tech. My name is Angelo and today I want to talk to you about the GTX 1070, which I think is sort of a legendary card that it has kind of been a little bit forgotten because the GTX 1060 has been more of a legend. And it's because the GTX 1060 was probably one of the best car ever produced by NVIDIA in ratio to price performance, together probably with the 1080 Ti that at the time we thought it was an outrageous price. But the reason I want to bring this particular car in 2023 is because to begin with, uh, this was my first car, not the, this model specifically, but the GTX 1070 was the first GPU I bought when I moved to the UK. So I have a very fond memories of that car, you know, giving me a lot of happiness at the time. And also because at the time I was able to go a little bit over what I used to have, it was always like the 60 series of car. So I wanted to go even higher this time and I got the 1070 because it had also two more gigs of RAM than the 1060. So it, this one has eight gigabytes of RAM, which is the same amount of VRAM you get on the 4060 or 4060 Ti or the Ryzen or the AMD RX 7600 by that matter. So yeah, seven years later, we're still rocking eight gigs of VRAM on the middle class. Well, well, let's not enter that discussion again. However, if you are looking right now for like a cheap car or in your country, you know, depending where you are, you can get this by a, a, for a decent price and you're wondering, is this worth it? Maybe you're building your first PC or you're building a second PC that you want to have some gaming cap capabilities or, you know, whatever reason it is, you have the opportunity to buy this one and you are wondering, is this worth it? Can I play the latest and greatest game with a GTX 1070? And well, that is what we are going to be testing today. But before we go to that, I have to ask you as usual to please like this video if you like it. If not, obviously, but just dislike, but don't try not to do it. Or, you know, subscribe to the channel if you like the content I do. Um, you know, I always appreciate if all of your comments and everything you write, I read and I try to, uh, on my best capabilities to, um, you know, ask whatever it is that you want me to do or test uh, or gaming or anything like that, I will try my best to do it. So now that I have taken that out of the system, let's go to the testing. And the first game I'm going to test and has become my standard is The Last of Us Part 1. I know this is not the best port ever or the most optimized game, but it has been improving a lot recently. And I think it's at a point where we can use it for like comparisons. So anyway, here we can see that the uh, 1070 is still capable of playing this game at a high quality uh, medium quality with high textures because of the 8 gigabytes of VRAM, but we needed to use FSR quality to sort of maintain above 45 to 50 FPS since it can go lower at some points and um, from 60 FPS, but it can go as high as 72. So as you see, it's a very variable the uh, frame rate in these games due to uh, the nature of it. But in general, you're going to have a very good experience as long as obviously you're going to be playing at 1080p and you are going to be always above normally 50 FPS. It can go lower to like 45, but that's mostly on cinematics and things like this. But I think you are going to have a very good experience considering the card. Now, the, a game that is a classic in my channel and I, I still love is Dying Light 2. In this case, I'm using the highest preset that doesn't contain ray tracing, obviously, because this car uh, doesn't support it native. You can, I think you can run the games, but the, there is no hardware, so it's going to go like a one or two frames per second. Anyway, on this game, using FSR Ultra Quality, this game has for some reason, and you can get above 60 FPS most of the time. I think there is some dips here or there on the half an hour I tested, but normally you're going to be over uh, 60 FPS, no problems. And also remember, I'm using the highest preset, so you can always go lower, like medium or something like that, and you're going to get better uh, results without having to use FSR if that's something that you know it bothers you and you don't want to use it for whatever reason. So as you can see here, we are having a very good experience. Any V-Sync issue or uh, um, that you see is it's just because I test without V-Sync to be able to see how much uh, frame can I get. Now, on the game uh, Spider-Man Miles Morales, this is another one of those games that, you know, I push it maybe too hard, but even so, we ha I had a good experience. We're talking about 50 to 60 
5 FPS depending on the situation. However, of course, I'm using 1080p and not using any kind of scaling resolution. I tested also with dynamic resolution scaling and you can get a very good quality and a constant 60 FPS if you don't mind that. I'm going a little bit lower in terms of resolution. Otherwise, you can just lower the quality of the game and use the highest preset possible. As I said, I always like to push the cards and see what's the best they can do in uh, give any given circumstances. So here you can see the it's a very enjoy enjoyable situation. And I always say also that, you know, in worst case scenario, you can enjoy these games like a 40 FPS if your monitor allows, or even a 30 FPS. I don't see any problem with that. I know that PC gamers are a little bit more, you know, I need to have 60, but many of these games you can have a very good quality of 1440p at 30 FPS. When we test Resident Evil 4, I am not sure if I forgot to remove the V-Sync because it never goes over 60. However, we can see we can maintain those 60 FPS very uh, well throughout the this um, demo that I am testing here, which is the area I normally test because I like the amount of uh, characters and the openness of the area with lots of... Um, geometry going around so i use the balance preset i just chose that and started testing and as you can see honestly you can play this game all day long no problem whatsoever i, I did however improve the um texture quality because as I, the balance preset is made for like four gigs so i you can improve the texture quality a little bit and it's still be under those eight gigabytes that this game needs and it's very sensitive to memory so this game will um have better quality on a 1070 than a 1060 just based on the fact that you can have better texture and those two extra gigabytes of ram will make a difference in this day and age now another game that i normally test and i uh, like even though it's still an unreal game and we have um, you know many of those. However, uh, this is Howard's Legacy. As you can see here, the game is running with a 1080p medium quality FSR. Very, very good. This is obviously much better than playing the game on a PlayStation 4, for example. And um, so you are having a very good experience. 70 FPS, uh, 65 FPS. I don't remember if it ever went down uh, under 60, but I don't think so. It was mostly around those. Um, those area and even you see here flying open world you can enjoy 60 fps and very smooth experience as you can see that frame time and frame rate line over there you're not going to have many problems other than you know the um the stuttering that it happens when loading or anything like that so yeah this is another game uh, this is another very good experience you can have with just a 1070 which is a seven year old car and it's still giving very good memories if you ask me so you can see here how this game is running beautiful and finally, obviously, I had to test the uh, f um, Street Fighter 6 for those who like like um, combat games or fighting games. I love them. I'm not very good at them, but I do like to play them. I, ha I still don't haven't played too much of Street Fighter 6, especially with Onda. However, you can see here that the game is running very good at 60 FPS. There is some dips, especially when the fight is going to start. You know, when the two characters are up front on the screen on the screen it gets to like 40 to 45 fps but when the fight starts then it gets to 60 fps and this is a 1080p at the highest preset and no any kind of reconstruction or anything like that is not applied here and i don't even remember that there is an option for that in this game however here is running at 1080p no problems whatsoever 60 fps like the game should be and it's a but very buttery so um that's another great experience you're going to have with a gtx 1070 So as you have seen, I have tested like the biggest AAA games released this year and um, well, some of the last year too, but I always try to, you know, test the like the most heavy games because normally if you can play those games, you can you are going to be able to play any esports game since they are a lot more um, you know, less demanding. So, uh, well, you know, it, it's so good that we still can rock a 1070 we're still at 8 gigabytes of VRAM, so that shouldn't be a problem, all things considered. You know, you, if you buy a 4060, obviously you're going to get more performance, but you're going to get the same amount of VRAM, so that shouldn't be a problem. But also, this car, because of the years it has, it's a 1080p car, medium settings at, mm, normally, so 8 gigabytes of VRAM is going to be more than enough, even for uh, the future. And, you know, I think this car is way better than the 1060 when it comes to performance, especially today. So if you have the opportunity to buy this one, you know, for a second rig, for your first rig, depending on what you are trying to do, depending on your country, obviously, and the price you can get it, uh, you know, the 1070s is still a very capable car from my point of view. 
I have fond memories of it. I'm ha seeing The Last of Us, Howard Legacy being played in the quality it is, uh, even if you have to use FSR, you know, it's, it's I think FSR is still, uh, it looks great and it's very helpful for this sort of card. It's giving new life. Otherwise, we will have to go to like lower resolution, 900p or lower quality setting. So from my point of view, the 1070 is still a very capable car on um, 2023. So of course, it will depend on the price that you get it. But compared to the offers right now, and considering this is seven years old, I think this is a uh, hate. Is, has aged better than probably the 4060 is going to. So yeah, that's my take on it and has my seal of approval. See you on the next video.